I didn't speak for years and years and years, and I tried to stay away from anything to do with the Holocaust because my days were work and my nights were nightmares for many years. People ask me, how do you think you survived? I survived? I don't know how I survived, but I know that there was something, something somewhere along, either in me or in my culture or, or in my psyche or something that, that helped me survive the different times of being in this horrible place. I came into a room where there's a huge, like a, uh, uh, like a jacuzzi. It looks like a huge jacuzzi. And there it was filled up with, 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 with all kinds of disinfectants. And they threw you inside. The couples were standing around you. And then you had to put your head under. You were naked. And if you didn't put your head under, then they would knock you over the head with, 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 a, with a club. And then uh, when you came out, Every artifice in your body, doesn't matter which artifice, your eyes, everything was burning because it was such strong uh, 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 carbolic or whatever. Uh, it, it, it was, it was it very strong disinfectant were in that particular place. And after that, you went into a place where they shaved your body here. They actually shaved you. I, I remember being shaved because I didn't have hair when I arrived in Skarzysko. And then we came into a room with shower heads. And I was waiting for the guests to come out because in the Warsaw Ghetto we knew that when you go into the into the place of uh, of, of, of death, uh, there are shower heads, but they're not real. Guest comes out, then you die. So you say, say vidu. You 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 have to say. And quite a few people around me were saying their prayers. Suddenly water came out, and then as soon as the water was switched off, we were chased into a uh, another uh, along the barrack. <coughs> and we were thrown uh, these striped pyjamas, you know, these, these prisoners' pyjamas, wooden cloaks, and also a hat. And I came out alive, out of that barrack, and I was looking for my father. And when I was looking for my father, I suddenly saw a man. I remember this man extremely well. So I went up to him, and I said to him, did you see my father? Where's my father? And he didn't answer. He just looked up to the sky. And I knew then that my father had been murdered. We were then taken to a barrack. And we were given a, a long harangue by the block elder, the man, the man in charge of the block. What you can do, what you can't do, what you and, and that you know that you're not here for holidays, you're going to have to work hard and you've got to be this and that and, and he gave you a long harangue and, and, and whatever you're going to do which is not right, the strafe is going to be, see, see that chimney he pointed out, see that chimney there, he said that's where you're going to go up. So we were assigned a preacher, a preacher is a bunk, there were all these three tier bunks and uh, I was given a bunk right at the bottom. A, a, a bottom bunk, so I went to sleep. When I woke up the next morning, when they woke, woke us up, you know, early next morning, there were three young men hanging from the rafters. So this was my kind of admission to Majdanek. I 
I want to educate as many people as possible about the possibility of what human beings can get up to, what they can do, what, what, what kind of devilry, and what's going on since the Holocaust has happened in all parts of the world. And this is my aim, this is why I bring them here and I show them, this is what happened. See what the world can descend to. See what ordinary people like, you know, educated Germany could create a situation like that.